Usually, sometimes a speaker, when he gets up, he likes to introduce himself. He likes to say something about himself, helps the audience get more acquainted with who he is. I like to start up with something like that. I'll tell you, I'm Jonathan Blakely, and I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> this will be the topic I will be touching on today. Crucify with Christ. Just a few words in Galatians 2, verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. That's my, that's my passage right there. Now, much to my surprise, doing a sermon on this passage was not easy. Now, what do I mean by that? I do not mean I had trouble figuring out what it meant. I feel I don't have anything to say on the text. This is not what I mean at all. You know, these are supposed to be 20 minutes now. They've increased my time slot from 10 to 20. And so, seeing all the things that were mentioned in this text, the thing that was difficult was, how in the world am I going to cram all this into 20 minutes? Well, thankfully, I have been given grace to do this. I think I will be pretty close to my time slot, but don't be surprised if I go just a little over. I don't think any of you will be upset by that. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start right here in the middle of this. Because you see, you see, I am crucified. That's three words at the end. You got, nevertheless, I live. Three words. What do you have right in the middle of that? You got, with Christ. That's where I'd like to start on this. And, see, and as you can see, the statement really stands out, and it should. I remember a few years ago reading this statement, wondering what it meant. What does it mean to be crucified with Christ Jesus? Although this is stated later in the passage, I feel it's an appropriate place to start. We must first establish what is, that this is done with Christ. That's the first thing you have to establish. It's only with Christ that this is done. And there are two different aspects I'm going to give you concerning this. There are several passages that speak about us doing certain things with Christ Jesus. In Romans 6 a, it says we are dead with Christ. Colossians 3 1 it speaks about being risen with Christ. Ephesians 2 5 it talks about how God has quickened us together with Christ. Amen. And also in Romans 6 4, Colossians 2 12, it speaks about being buried with Christ. So this is quite a thing to ponder. What can we see in this expression, with Christ, as it relates to this main passage in Galatians? For one aspect, we see the remarkable unity between Christ and his people. That there, There's a connection there. And this is brought out in John chapter 15, where Jesus says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. What is a branch and vine? They're connected. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man ab if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And what I mean to bring out here is what happens to Christ has an impact on his people. And Christ has been crucified, put to death. We have, as a result of his death, died also. When Christ died, he purchased the, the church with his own blood. That is, his death resulted in us being separated from the world. No longer being joined to it, but rather being joined to him disconnected and reconnected elsewhere. Now, part of the process of being separated from the world is, in fact, dying to it. That's that disconnection. Die to it. Cut off from it. This is brought out in Galatians 6.14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. This testifies of that great deliverance that took place when Christ died. When we look at the text this way, we can we can see that when Christ died, his people, from a higher view, died also. Now, from another aspect, Christ is the means God uses to put us into this state. You are dead, and God uses Christ to cause you to become dead to this world. Here you can see that in order to be crucified to this world, Christ is the absolute requirement. There's no other way to die to this world than to be connected to the Son, Christ Jesus. And it is evident in the scriptures that he's the only way any man can die to the world and die to sin. 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. See, there's that connection. With his own self bear our sins, what's the result? We being dead to sins. That's the result of that. So that being said, this passage from a certain perspective can be viewed this way. Just like it says he purchased us with his blood, like the blood's the means that he purchased us. You can read the text that way. You're crucified with Christ. He is the means by which you are crucified. Now at this point, I do want to say a word about the involvement of baptism in this. From a lower view, that is a human view, this crucifixion begins when you were baptized into Christ. When you're baptized, you died with Christ, you were raised with him as well. This is brought out in Romans chapter 6, 3 verse 4. 
Know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. This is a joyous time in your life to look back on, your baptism. And even though there does tend to be a lot of philosophy about baptism or a day, that it seems that there's a lot of dispute about it. But in the word of God, it is not approached this way. Baptism is a joyous thing to look into. Jesus even said, He that is saved and is he that is saved and is bapt, believes and is baptized, excuse me, shall be saved. That's Mark 16, 16. We cannot try and avoid and misconstrue these words. But I mean, many times when I've mentioned that text, someone raises their hand. Many times, whoa, whoa, whoa. wait for the Jonathan, doesn't say if you're not baptized, you're condemned. Well, see, that would be an absurd way to say that because unbelief invalidates everything else. If you don't believe, you're not going to be baptized. It'd be like saying, now, if you don't believe and you're not walking in the Spirit, you're damned. See, that doesn't make any sense. If you don't believe, you're not walking in the Spirit. All of that is included in not believing. The bottom line, baptism is involved in your salvation regardless of what men tell you. Something really did happen when you were baptized with Christ. And the words of our Lord have shown this to be the case. Even those who do have evidence of life, they're commanded to be baptized in Acts 2.30. I'm sure many of us are familiar with that passage. In Galatians 3.27, Paul told the Galatians that those who, those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's what happened when they were baptized. In Colossians 2.11 and 12, Paul spoke about the circumcision of Christ and the operation of God being things that attend baptism. And also in 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, Peter spoke about how no one in his family, they were saved by water. Remarkable account. And then he follows by saying in a like figure, baptism does also now save us, and this being tied to the answer of a good conscience. Now the reason I bring this up is because baptism is involved in what I'm talking about. That being the crucif crucifixion of Christ. And at this point, I'm talking about where it begins. There's a beginning point. There's a point when you're crucified. And this is that point. Seeing the connection is critical, but I don't want to neglect the fact that this is something that the Lord has done, not something I have done to myself. I did not crucify myself, but God has crucified me when I gave myself to him. It was, a, it was at the point I was baptized into Christ that God did this great work within me. We will find that this is not only something that has taken place in the past, but it is something that is continually done from day to day. Now I want to get more into this main statement right here. I am crucified. Just that phrase by itself. You notice the wording of the text. It says, I am crucified. There are a few other versions. They read it this way. They said, I was crucified with Christ, which is also true. There is a sense in which this has taken place in the past, but it's also a sense in which you are currently crucified also. Now, however, sometimes men have a tendency to apply the atu jargon to this passage. They say we ought to, like we think of ourselves as crucified. Or make like we are when really we are not. See, that's a total injustice to the passage. One version even read this way. I, I consider myself crucified with Christ. That's wrong. I am crucified with Christ. Amen. That is the right reading. The very real thing is taking place in every believer. To speak as though it did not really happen robs this text of its power and meaning. Amen. Another statement like the one I've just touched on is one that can be viewed through several aspects. Just as we've seen, it is something that's done with Christ. Let's now look further what actually is being done. From one aspect, this is talking about how we've died to this world and how we've died to sin also. This is based on Galatians 6, 14, through Christ by whom the world was crucified and me and I unto you. That's, that's the main text I'm using to back this up. Now what happened when Christ was crucified? He died. This was the means by which he died. We are to take this to mean that we have died as well, seeing that it does say we are crucified with Christ. When someone dies, they become insensible to all surrounding objects. They can no longer see or hear what is around them, and the things around them no longer have influence over them. This is the kind of change that has taken place in Christ Jesus. Being dead in a sense differs significantly from the sense in which we were dead prior to coming into Christ. For we are, in that sense, says we were dead in sins. This is dead to sins. Now, dead in sins, here's some texts that speak about that. Ephesians 2.1, you hath ye quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Colossians 2.13, you being dead in your sins and the uncircum uncircumcision of your flesh, hath ye quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. 2 Corinthians 5.14, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because thus we thus judge, if one died for all, then all were dead. 